Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N O. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn about homonyms. Today is going to be our lesson number eight in the series of ten on the topic of homonyms. Lesson number eight. What are homonyms? We have talked about it before several times, seven, seven different occasions to be precise. What are homonyms? Homonyms are two words that happen to have different spellings, they happen to have different meanings, they happen to mean different things, and yet they are pronounced in the same way. They have the same pronunciations, despite the fact, not some pronunciations, pronunciation, there is only one obviously, they have the same pronunciation, despite the fact that they have different spellings and different meanings. Let's get going. We'll begin with number 71. Number 71. Now before we get to the part uh, where the two words are homonyms, let's first learn a word. We need to learn something first. The word, you, the, the word that we need to learn is descent, which is a verb. Descent. Very simple pronunciation, obviously. Descent with a D, which simply means to go down. To go down, or to go down in value or rank. To go down. That's the verb. The noun of this word is D E S C E N T. It changes the spelling, it becomes a T, and now it is a noun, which is simply which is simply the act of going down. Which is simply the act of going down. Now this descent that we just learned, descent as in the act of going down, it qualifies as a homonym of another word which is D I S S E N T which is a verb. You see, it's, it's a little confusing here because this one happens to be a verb, this one happens to be a verb, this one happens to be a noun. So not only these two words, not only these two words have different spellings, they, they have different spellings and of course different meanings, but they also happen to be different parts of speech and yet they have the same pronunciation. This descent means to disagree, to disagree. To disagree or to defer an opinion. To defer in opinion. If you have one opinion on this on the, on the given subject and I have if I and I hold a different opinion, then we dissent. We dissent, we disagree. But don't confuse this dissent with this dissent, which means the act of going down, which is a noun, which comes from here. Today, this is 71, let's see if I can quickly find it, and if I cannot quickly find it, I'm not going to take too long, but if I can quickly find it, find it, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you, where, oh, there we go, number 62, or part 6, on part 6, number 62, in part 6, this is the 8th part, not the last part, but part 6 is where we learn the antonym of these two words. The antonym of this descent is... Ascent. Ascent is the act of going up. This is the act of going down. This is the act of going up. Ascent. And this ascent is a homonym of the antonym of this word which is spelled A-S-S-E-N-T. Which is a which is a work again. So make sure you keep the spelling separate. This one is A-S-S-E-N-T and this is C-E. This is C-E. This is SE. So this one has two S's, so double S, ascent, which means to agree. To agree. And one more time, ascent is the antonym of descent, and this ascent is the antonym of this descent, which is the act of going up, act of going down. Let's move on then. Next problem, uh, next, next, next pair. Next pair actually we have is very simple, very straightforward. It's not going to take too long at all. 
sometimes we get lucky and sometimes we don't. This was number 71 and 72 is very straightforward. Very simple in fact. We have homonyms which are fourth as in one, two, three, fourth. And then we have this fourth as in this is an adverb. And of course they are pronounced in the same way, fourth. They are pronounced in the same way, fourth. And what does it mean? What does this fourth mean? This fourth means to go forward. To go forward. Or to go or to go forward in time. To go ahead in time. When people say henceforth, that means from now on we're going to do that. Do you understand? Henceforth, from this time forward. Go forth, go forward, go in front, go forth. That forth and this forth, those are two different words obviously. Did I? No, that's right. So the only difference is that you leave out the U. I just noticed the only difference is that this one has a U, that one does not. Do you understand? Okay, let's carry on then. On the side note, on the side note, since we're talking about the leaving out the U, one thing that I find very annoying, and, some, and sometimes, not always, but sometimes, I see even the grown-up people go around spelling this number, is to be spelled F-O-R. This, this number is not, it's not, Four, it's not 40, it's 40. It doesn't have a U in it. I see sometimes people don't pay any attention and they put down like a child F O R F O U R and then T Y. It's not 40, it's 40. Four T with a U would be the four T would be sounds to me like this one T, two T, three T and four four T's. Let's move on. Like I said, there's nothing good we're talking about. It was a side note. There's another pair, 73. The word is stationary. It's an adjective. Let's put the pronunciation right in the center because we have the same pronunciation, obviously. Sta, show. That's the second syllable. Sta, show. Near, e, stationary. What does this stationary mean? This stationary is an adjective which means not moving. Not moving. Still. Fixed. Fixed. In physics, when we talk about a stationary object, a stationary object is an object that is not in motion. It is not moving, it is fixed. Let's talk about a homonym of this word. Homonym of this word would be spelled S T A T I O N E R Y. So again, the difference is just one letter. This one is spelled with an A, this one is this one is spelled with an E. What does this stationary mean? This stationary that you see, with spelled with an E, is something that you would purchase at a store that sells office supplies. This, this stationary means writing materials. Writing materials and office supplies. And to buy the writing materials and office supplies such as notebook, pencil, papers, uh, ink for your printers, or toners, whatever you need for your office, those sort of things that you need to purchase those sort of things, you would go to a, an, not an rather, to, you will go to a stationery store. Do you understand? Stationery store. Don't confuse that stationery with that stationery. This is with an A. I don't know actually what I can tell you actually in terms of mnemonic to keep them separate, but that's what it is. 
let's keep on going. We have too much to do here, too many, too many tricky words here, so we have to keep on going at a steady pace. Next word, number 74. Number 74 is very simple, very straightforward, it will not take us long at all. And the pair is whose, as in whose book is this? Whose book is this? Whom does it belong to? Whose book is this? Who is the owner? Whose book is this? And then this whose, which is a contraction, which is a contraction of contraction of who is who is there who is there who is there just like you can you have a contraction I am we put it like this or you are we say you are just like that we have a contraction of who is as whose and you have to figure out from the context as to what that word actually means because by the sound they sound the same who's and whose who's at the door who is the who who is the one who did not turn in the homework who's the one you see who's number 75 number 75 uh, number 75 is a tricky one. Number 75 is a tricky one. Let's take care of it. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one only because only because I want to make it a tricky one. We could keep it very simple and be done with it in two seconds, but we're not going to do that. It's pronounced pair, of course. Very simple. Nothing to it. And this pair, which is also very simple, very straightforward. This is a fruit, a fruit, and of course this means two of two of something. Pair of gloves, pair of trousers, a pair of whatever you might have. Do you understand? The reason why, the reason why this is not going to be tricky, this is not going to be straightforward, is because. We're going to learn one more word, which is also pronounced pair. And that's something we have to learn because it's, a because it's a vocabulary word. These two are not obviously vocabulary words. These are very simple words. Let's learn one more word, which is also pronounced in the same way, which is P-A-R-E. Again, pronounced in the same way, pair. Let's learn it here, shall we? So now we have three words, three words with three different meanings, with three different meanings. But they are all pronounced in the same way. Pair. What does this word mean? Pair. It's a verb. It's a verb. What does it mean to pair? It, I'm, I'm going to write down the entire meaning. It, it's kind of kind of long. It means to remove. To remove. The, the outer covering or skin of something by peeling, by peeling with a knife, with a knife, not a wife, with a knife. So, if you're peeling something, you're taking the outer skin of something, the outer skin of something, outer covering of something, that process of taking the outer skin of something is called pairing, pair. It also means, so this is, the this is the literal meaning, this is the literal meaning. Metaphorically it means, metaphorically it means to To whittle away, to, to whittle away. Let's learn this word whittle, shall we? We're going to learn this word whittle so that we can understand what it means to whittle. One 
one more time, it's pronounced whittle. What does it mean to whittle? It means it means to reduce or eliminate something gradually. To reduce or eliminate something gradually. To cut into small pieces. To, to cut or to shave in small pieces. Now again, when we say to shave, we're talking about shaving of wood. If you take a knife, if you take a knife or a blade, back in the old days, not these days, of course, these days we would not let a child do that. But when I was a little boy, we did not have sharpeners. We had a pencil. We would take a pencil and we have a blade or a knife, and we'll we'll sharpen the 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 tip of the pencil to write. And that process of taking away uh, the uh, the shavings, the pieces of wood in the in the front, is called paring. But it is not used very often in the very literal sense. If you are going to hear this word pair, it is in most cases used metaphorically, and this is how you would use metaphorically. This is how we will use it metaphorically. I'm going to put the example on the top. I'm going to put the example on the top. Just give me one second. There we go. It's an idiom. What we're going to learn right now is an idiom. And the idiom is pair, pair to the bone. Pair to the bone, which means to cut something down, to cut something down, to cut something down, or to reduce something, to reduce something, to bare minimum. Oh, this is a strange thing that we have the word bear, which rhymes with pair. And that bear, of course, and of course that bear that we just wrote down would qualify as a homonym of this bear, which of course would also qualify as a homonym of. Uh, there is a third one I can't remember right now. But you see this bear, this bear, and that bear, which means bare minimum to to the very minimum possible. So what does it mean when we talk about pair to the bone? If someone says, if if someone says to you, we cannot cut the budgets anymore. We cannot cut the budget anymore. We cannot make any more reductions in the budget. We cannot make any more cuts in the budget because it's already been paired to the bones. The budget is already paired to the bone. It's already been cut down to the. It will already been cut down. It's already been reduced to the bare minimum. There is nothing left there. There is no more meat left on it. There is no more fat left left on it for us to trim. There is no fat left, there is no meat left, it's been paired to the bone. It is the bare minimum. We cannot reduce anymore. Like I said, it was a long discussion to learn this word, pair. And that pair is a, synonym, is a homonym of this pair, but that is the same pair. Is, is, a, is, a, is a homonym of the other pair that we saw, P-E-A-R and P-A-I-R. Let's keep on going. Paired to the bone is, is the expression, is the idiom, paired to the bone. Here's another example if you like. Where can we put it? Let's put it up here. Another example if you like, another sentence. Another example. He, he, whittle, he whittled, or <coughs> he whittled down rather. The the idiom is whittle down. He whittle down or he he pared down. Make sure you use the right idiom. Pared down or whittle down is the is the idiom. He whittle down or pared down his expenses. He whittle down or he pared down his expenses. After he was laid off, after he lost his job, after the accident, after he lost a job, 
he whittled down, he pared down his expenses, which means he reduced his expenses to bare minimum. No more luxuries, no more good stuff in life, just the bare minimum that he needed. He whittled it down, he pared it down, he, he pared down his budget. One does not say he pared down his budget to bare minimum. One does not say that because that would be redundant because that's what pared down means. So don't say he pared it down to minimum. That will be redundant. He pared down his budget, which means he reduced his budget, he reduced his expenses, he pared them down to the bare minimum. Let's keep on going. What number was this? This was a very long discussion. Tell you what, I'm going to stop right here because the video is going to get very long otherwise. Let's stop right here, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.